Hello and welcome to the Musical Instrument Investigator. Today we are going to have a look at an auction um, being held by Anderson and Garland auctioneers who are based in the UK. Uh, this is the music auction which is actually happening tomorrow the 17th of February 2022. It is the 16th today so uh, a day to go. Um, there's a whole number of kind of different musical instruments here uh, we're just going to look at the first page because past this kind of recording equipment and amplifiers it gets into um, kind of records and things so it's musical instruments and records stuff like that so we're just going to look at the first page there's about 80 items or so uh, the buyer's premium for this auction is 26.4 percent plus vat so obviously this is in the uk as always look at all the information on the website if you're going to purchase it and you're going to get something shipped outside of the uk or even getting something shipped inside the uk can sometimes be expensive um yeah so without further ado uh let's have a look and see what uh, musical instruments we have in this auction so we have a uh, a Boucher True Tone C Melody Tenor Saxophone here from circa uh, 1926. So good few pictures here. Uh, you can look at the general information down here as always. If they've got anything particularly interesting, estimate is three to four hundred pounds. Uh, I'm not sure that this particular website shows current bids, so you might just need to tune in for the live bidding. Uh, we have a Dearman President Alto saxophone cased here, and these pictures are quite uh, quite clear. Looks like we can expand them a bit. So so far we're looking good in the uh, in the picture zone. So that's always good. You know that I like to see at least decent pictures. Uh, a rare Swanee slide saxophone there with soprano uh, mouthpiece. That's interesting. I've definitely not seen one of these before. So that's a new one uh, a baritone saxophone stand yeah, interesting enough uh, an american glory tone b flat metal covered whole plateau clarinet it's another item that i've not seen before um, interesting kind of color there so curious a harry peddler metal b flat covered whole clarinet there probably ex-US military it's saying there pair of boozy and hawks clarinets imperial model d26 b flat and a cased and a selma b flat console simple system clarinet boozy and hawks emperor b flat blackwood clarinet there some other pictures and information here with pictures pretty pretty clear boozy and hawks e flat clarinet cased some other details uh, here other pictures and Howarth and Co oboe there uh, Hans Krul oboe from Tubingen a Roland FR3S digital piano accordion well wow, I actually I think this is the first time I've ever seen a uh, digital piano accordion so this is actually pretty pretty curious what's the estimate on this six to eight hundred pounds so interesting to see how that uh, goes uh, a Delicia Coral V120 bass accordion of the non-digital type uh, a Setimio Soprani accordion that's quite nice looking 50 to 100 pounds uh, uh, Piglia Campo Numana piano accordion a Hona Melodian let's have a look at the pictures here it's good that this auction has a few less items so I can be a bit slower looking through some of these lots uh, a Lacanel Anglo System Concertina estimate two to four hundred pounds as I tend to always say that there's there's money in the concertinas so if you have a concertina somewhere in your loft in your basement or in your folk music room then uh, and you want to part with it then uh, you probably get something for it and some of them go extremely well anglo system concertina there probably lacanel interesting a stradivarius style violin with two bows early 20th century two bows one stamped taut so you just see here this is a very standard uh, kind of trade violin here 
it's nothing too exciting so far uh, this bow potentially is a bit more interesting let's just see here so yeah this bow with the kind of inlaid uh, bits could be an interesting German bow uh, potentially and we'll move on German violin bow and case once again I think it's a fairly kind of standard thing quite a nice back not too bad violin labelled Nicolas Perron French violin labelled Nicolas Perron three to five hundred pounds is the estimate there it's got uh, the repair there and the button let's have a look here it has a neck graft so potentially this is quite interesting could potentially be a uh, <clears throat> late 18th century uh, French violin I'm not entirely sure but uh, nevertheless more interesting than the other items Mirko violin stamped uh, Graziot circa 1850 I've got a few pictures here Yeah, not too bad looking instruments there's a few interesting violins anyway John Schneider violin bow German Puna Pernambuco fine Austrian violin labelled Franciscus Geisenhof estimates two to three thousand highly flamed certainly looks fairly interesting nice back on it seems to be a fairly good condition so definitely a bit more interesting than the norm quite what it is I'm not 100% uh, sure but it'd be interesting to see what the uh, auction results come in as so definitely an interesting one to look out for That's the wrong button. Um, German violin bow stamped W.E. Dorfler. Two to three hundred pounds is the estimate there. A whole load of violin makers spares and clamps. Usually it's probably something kind of useful hidden away uh, somewhere in these boxes. And let's see what's on to the next lot. A bundle of uh, 10 violin bows. Let's see. Quickly look. Uh, I don't think there's anything of particular note here. Early 20th century German violin bow and case. This looks fairly standard. Have a look at the uh, back of this violin. look at the scroll all fairly normal French Miracle Violin JTL type I don't know why it always uh, drops you down to the bottom of the page and a German trade violin late 19th century well I think some of the other ones were German trade violins as well so I'm not sure why we're singling out this one and have a quick look at the scroll there early 20th century German violin there much a similar kind of grade of instrument 
Let's see another bow there. Looks like it's something funny going on in the head. But it's still pretty good pictures, so can't complain. German Magini style violin, 19th century, with the double purfling, but it uh, looks pretty normal. Pretty kind of tradey type affair. And the bow there as well. Okay. A John Sumner violin, German violin with a John Sumner. Uh, label apparently this does look once again fairly standard uh, kind of violin let's have a look at the bow there potentially a bit more interesting interesting head on it and uh, interesting frog so that could be potentially a bit more interesting than uh, than the rest German trade violin again. Yeah, it's pretty standard. Um, Frederick Daniel Mahoney violin, another and bow, an English violin by Frederick Daniel Mahoney, London. Numbered 66 and dated 1932. Uh, Brazil wood bow and another violin. Um, I think this lot is actually fairly interesting. Three to five hundred pounds is the uh, the estimates here. Some interesting looking uh, violin. I think they're saying that this one is the Mahoney one and here's the the bow. That's a terrible bow. Um violin here. Kind of looks a bit uh, fairly curious. Some very good pictures on this. So. Interesting uh, crackleature on the varnish there. But, uh, yeah, the other violin is quite uh, quite nice. That could be quite an interesting lot. Goulding and Co. London violin estimates two to three hundred nineteenth century English. This is quite nice, two to three hundred actually, that's not too bad. Quite a nice back on it. So this has potential. Some rep repairs there. And we've got a bow as well. Pretty normal. And then there's a Tanglewood Cove Creek Banjo. Hundred to hundred fifty pounds, just the front and the back. Uh, Paramount style B tenor banjo cased. Uh, Tony Sullivan Sully's tenor banjo uh, cased. Interesting, three to four hundred there. Kloss carbon fiber guitar. Travel guitar from the USA, 100 to 200 is the uh, estimate. There's a whole load of uh, images here. Kloss, another mini travel guitar. So, got a few of them here. And Sam Radding, uh, Go Guitar, another travel guitar. So, it looks like someone had a collection of uh, travel guitars uh, another go guitar here All these little mini ones and Yamaha Pacifica 112 JOVS let's have a look at that pretty good these Pacificas I used to have uh, a couple of them when I was a bit younger 
of the higher end of the old style, the 812Ws. I think they're really, really good. Quite high end. Uh, German Parler guitar. This is pretty a low grade one, 50 to 70. Yeah, sounds about right. Fire Squender. Squender. Fire Squire. Fender Squire Affinity. I can't uh, speak today, clearly. But it's a little amp. Pretty normal. Baldwin 704 semi acoustic bass guitar. 1960s. Uh, 2003 Fender Custom Shop uh, NOS Stratocaster with its certificate. 1500 to 2000 there. A Gibson Custom ES175 Jazz Guitar there. Seems to have all that paperwork. Quite nice. And a PRS McCarty 2 to 2.500. Serial number. What? Uh, it's curious. Fender DG two five S Dreadnought Acoustics in a Hiscox case. And a PRS Angelus acoustic guitar from two thousand and thirteen. The estimate is uh, two to three hundred there. Gibson ES339 Studio Semi Acoustic Guitar from 2014. Good, good pictures so far. Tanglewood Java NWJ SFCE Electro Acoustic. I think I remember when these Java series came out. They were quite, uh, quite nice looking. Some of them. Fender Mexico Telecaster from. 2005. Very good. Epiphone uh, Coupe CH semi acoustic guitar. Gordon Smith. Good old Gordon Smith semi acoustic guitar. The kind of UK's answer to Gibson for a period. It's an interesting model. Um, Still going, I think, under new ownership, um, as far as I'm aware, 450 to 550. They're quite popular in certain fields. Uh, GNL L1000 bass from 1980, made in Fullerton. So interesting. That's the collaboration of uh, kind of. Uh, I think George George Fullerton and Leo Fender I think that's their kind of company so they're always quite popular Takamini P3DL 12 string guitar looks actually quite a nice uh, example they've done well to kind of picture the uh, these are pretty good uh, good pictures actually nice top three to five hundred that's not bad We've got another Gordon Smith semi acoustic guitar here, Florentine Cutaway from 2007. So, not the most inspiring of uh, guitars, but uh, like I said they're popular. Rickenbacker 33012 uh, string acoustic guitar, 2007. These are always popular. Fender, Mex Fender Mexico Precision Bass. And a Dean Rhapsody 12 string bass guitar there. Another GNL ASAT classic vibe guitar. Some of these are quite, uh, quite nice. Some of these interesting kind of. Uh, uh, stepped kind of pickups, not this one, but they did do some uh, interesting uh, things. Uh, Maison five string bass, and Fender Deluxe Precision bass guitar, 
Seems to. Just checking that again, actually. Just uh, some kind of uh, signatures on that. Have they mentioned anything about that? I'm not sure. Uh, it doesn't really say. Anyway, and moving on. Fender uh, Squire Strat. And a Fender Squire Affinity strap there with the big 70s uh, headstock, which I think is kind of cool. Weststone Concord uh, guitar from the 1980s. It's definitely a bit uh, curious looking. 9 6 amplifier, Spider 2, Roland DAC 50XD guitar amplifier there, whole load of uh, things leads and then we've got uh, electroacoustic ukulele here looks quite nice Yamaha guitar lele guitar lele and a uh, uh, larker ukulele here not many pictures on that one Romanian cello with its bow definitely looks the standard type a uh, Celtic floor standing harp hundred to hundred and fifty there a Beckstein uh, model a grand piano interesting definitely an interesting auction this one it's got quite a lot of uh, different things a lot of pictures on that that's good estimate 800 to 1200 there Roland JX 8P synth keyboard custom precision drum kit there two Yamaha DD65 digital drum machines Swiss cylinder music box, I think we're coming to the end here. It's a pickup arm there. Then we're on turntables, loudspeakers, reel to reel tapes, all these kind of things. And then I think we've just got a few amplifiers. So I think that is pretty much us. We are at the end of the, the main part of the auction that we wanted to look at. So yeah. Uh, Anderson and Garland, uh, the music auction, which is um, finishing tomorrow on the 17th of February. Some interesting things, actually. So good, good range of different stuff. Some potential violins there and with some potential bows and some other instruments, some guitars of note and some curiosity kind of things. This uh, digital piano accordion is pretty interesting. So, yeah, if you're interested, um, check out the auction. I'll put a link in description and, uh, yeah, see if there's anything that you... Uh, might want to bid on uh, so until next time thanks a lot for watching and i'll uh, catch you next time ciao for now bye many thanks for tuning in to the musical instrument investigator i hope that you enjoyed the video if you did then please like uh, subscribe and turn on notifications and watch out for the next video coming soon